Hey everyone, in this video we will be answering the question, what is an algebraic equation? In order to do that, we have to distinguish between an expression and an equation, which leads us into our first example. Determine if the following are expressions or equations. So 3 plus 5 is an expression. 4 plus 2 equals 6 is an equation. 10x equals 5 is also an equation. And 2x minus 1 is an expression. So what differentiates an expression from an equation is the equal sign. If you look at the two equations, we have equality, whereas the two expressions do not. Right? The variables don't matter. One expression does have a variable. One does. Similarly for the equations. Okay, but the big difference is the equality. And the reason that's so important to distinguish between expressions or equations is because we're going to be given both throughout this course. Typically for expressions, we're going to be asked to simplify, whereas for equations with variables, we're going to be asked to solve. So by correctly identifying whether we have an expression or an equation, we'll know how to correctly finish the problem. So an algebraic equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. Algebraic equations can be number sentences when both expressions are numerical, but often they contain variables whose values have not been determined. So on the left, we have an algebraic equation, 4 plus 2 equals 6, which is just stating a fact, right? If we add 4 and 2, we get 6. On the right, we have an algebraic equation, x plus 2 equals 6. Now one of our terms is a variable. And typically, we'll be asked to figure out the value of x that makes that equation true. And comparing it to the left, we could see that value would be 4. So our goal in solving is figuring out what value of the variable makes the equation true. And when we do that, there are three different choices that we can get. So when algebraic equations contain a variable whose value has not yet been determined, we must determine whether. The equation is true for all the possible values of the variable, the equation is true for a certain set of the possible values of the variable, or the equation is never true for any of the possible values of the variable. So let's put this into some context. So looking at that first case, the equation is true for all the possible values of the variable. That means if you're looking at an equation, you can pick any x value that you can think of. When you put it in for x, the equation remains true. So an example of this, would be x plus 1 equals x plus 1. No matter what x value that you choose, this equation is always going to be true. Now you add 1 to that x value on the left, you add 1 to that x value on the right. Another example would be 2x equals 2x. Regardless of the x value that you pick, 2 times that value is still going to be equal to 2 times that value. In the next case, the equation is true for a certain set of the possible values of the variable. So now we only have a fixed number of x values that we can choose that will make the equation correct. So for instance, an equation like x plus 1 equals 3. The only x value that makes that true is 2. Another equation, 2x equals 8. The only x value that makes that true is going to be 4. And then the last case is an equation that is never true. So you could pick any x value that you'd like, and the equation is not going to be true. So an example of that would be x plus 1 equals x. Pick an x value, add 1 to it on the left side, leave it alone on the right side. Those two values will never be equivalent. Another example would be 0 times x equals 4. Pick any x value, multiply it by 0. We're never going to get that product equal to 4. So now for each of these, how we write the solution sets. So when we can pick any number that we like, any number, okay, the best way to describe the set of all numbers that we can choose would be all real numbers. And we talked about number sets in a previous video. So all real numbers. Okay, that would be the best way to describe the solution set of any equation that falls into this category. 
in this example, we have x plus 1 equals 3. Right, so that solution set is going to be 2. Right? Only an x value of 2 would make this equation true. Here we'd have 4 right, as our solution set. Uh, I actually want to add one more example here. Let's figure out an equation that's true for more than one value of x. So a good example would be x squared equals 25. That equation is going to be true for positive 5 as well as negative 5. So that's a good example of an equation that has more than one value of x that makes the equation true. And then in category 3, regardless of the x value that you pick, never going to be true, we refer to that solution set as no solution. There's no x value that you can come up with that's going to make any of these equations true. Right, so your answers should fall in one of these three categories. All real numbers, so you can pick any real number you like, the equation is true. It's true for a fixed number of x values, so we have one or two right now, or it's never true no matter what x value that you pick. So to define it, the solution set of an equation written with only one variable is the set of all values one can assign to that variable to make the equation a true statement. Any one of those values is said to be a solution to the equation. So to solve an equation means to find the solution set for that equation. So they've given us an example, confirm that the solution set of 3x minus 4 equals 8 is 4. So what they're saying is they solved it, they figured out that the answer is 4, they want us to confirm that they did it correctly. So that's going to require us replacing x with 4, and I do so in parentheses, just in case there's a positive or a negative, just to make sure everything lines up nicely. So that equals 8. Let's fix that 8. So I have 12 minus 4 equals 8. 8 equals 8. So we do in fact get a true statement, so therefore we know that x equals 4 was a correct solution. When we have all real numbers as our solution set, I would test 2 or 3 to make sure that those three numbers make the equation true. No solution is a little bit harder to check because we'd have to check that doesn't work for every possible value that you can pick, and that's an infinite number of things. But I would check 1 or 2, see if we can't figure out if we missed an x value that would have worked. Now when solving an equation, we make use of two properties of real numbers that allow us to manipulate the equation without changing the solution set. Now you've probably used these before, you just haven't defined them mathematically. The first is the addition property of equality. If a equals b is true, then a plus c equals b plus c will also be true for all real numbers. Now that looks hard at the first read through, but what this is simply saying is if we have an equation, what we add to one side of the equation, we have to add to the other in order to not change the solution, to come up with the correct solution of the equation. So looking at our example, x plus eight equals 12, I wanna isolate the x, so I'm going to subtract eight from both sides. So x plus eight minus eight, equals 12 minus 8. Now I can combine, so I get x on the left side, and that is equal to 4. And again, the property here is the addition property of equality, which I abbreviate APE. Now, you probably don't typically write it in line. Many of you probably are taught just to write minus 8 underneath both sides of the equation, and that's fine. And we're going to move towards that anyway, but right now, just seeing it written out, this is how it would look. The other property is the multiplication property of equality, which states if a equals b is true, then a times c is equal to b times c will also be true for all real numbers. Stated simply, if we have an equation, what we multiply the one side of the equation by, we have to multiply the other side of the equation by in order to not change the solution set. So in our example, we have one, uh, 4x equals 12. So I'm going to rewrite 4x equals 12. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 fourth. 
and that's by the multiplication property of equality, which we abbreviate MPE. And now we do our simplification, so 1 fourth times 4 is 1, so we wind up with x on the left side, and 12 times 1 fourth is 3, so it gives us a solution x equals 3. And now for solution sets, you could either leave it as x equals 4, or you may see it written with curly brackets like we did earlier. Okay, so now with these two properties, let's look at a few examples. Solve the following equations for the value of x. Be sure to justify each step with a property of real numbers. And we may have properties other than addition property of equality and multiplication property of equality show up. So 3x minus 4 equals 8. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. And this is how many of you are probably shown how to do that. And that's by the addition property of equality, which is going to give us 3x equals 12. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 third. And that's by the multiplication property of equality, which is x equals 4. Or 4 in our curly brackets. Now, I think it's important to mention, and I probably should mention it on the last slide, there's only an addition and a multiplication property of equality because subtraction is defined as addition of a negative value. And there's no division because division is just multiplication by a reciprocal value. Right? So dividing by third is equivalent to multiplying by one third. So that's why we only technically need the addition and the multiplication property of equality. And we'll also see we can do both of those properties with variable terms as well. They don't have to only be constants. So if I look here, x plus 5 equals 5 plus x, let's look to do our first step with the variable terms. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And that's by the addition property of equality. It doesn't matter that our terms are variables as long as what I'm doing to one side, I'm doing to the other. So we get 5 equals 5. Now we can go further, but that's enough. The question we have to ask ourselves, is 5 always equal to 5? And our answer should be yes. So what does that tell us about the solution of this equation? That means that we should be able to pick any value of x, and the equation would always be true. And we could check that if we checked 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. 5 plus 1 is also 6. Let's say 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. 5 plus 10 is 15. So the solution set for this particular problem would be described as all real numbers. We can pick any real number and this equation is going to be true. If we decided to subtract 5 as our first step, we would have wound up with x equals x. Again, always a true statement, no matter what value of x you picked. So we'd come to the same conclusion, just it would look different. 2 times the quantity 5 minus x is equal to 12 minus 2x. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute. So 10 minus 2x equals 12 minus 2x. And that's by the distributive property. And now I'm going to add 2x to both sides of this equation. And we wind up with 10 equals 12. So now, compared to the last example, 10 does not always equal 12. In fact, it never equals 12. So what does that say about the solution set of this equation? Well, since 10 never equals 12, there's no value of x that we can think of that would make this equation true. So we describe the solution set as no solution. And now we have x plus 4 all over 3 equals 5. So I'm going to start by putting this term in parentheses and multiplying both sides of this equation by 3. And that's by the MPE. Oh, I forgot one here. That should be APE. So that gives us x plus 4 equals 15. Subtract 4 from both sides of this equation. That's by the addition property of equality. And we're going to wind up with x equals 11. So our solution set is the value 11. We can check that. 11 plus 4 is 15. Divide by 3 is 5. So it is a true equation. Now our last example, they've given us six equations, 
and they want us to determine which of the following equations have the same solution set by recognizing properties of real numbers rather than solving. So they don't want us to just solve all six of these and see which ones have the same answer. They want us to be a little bit more creative in figuring out which ones will have the same solution set. So for instance, let's start, we're going to put a red circle around A. So we're going to go through each of these equations and see if we can justify or prove that not 2x my, uh, wouldn't have the same solution set as 2x minus 8 equals 6. So if we look at x minus 1 equals 2, if I multiply this whole equation by 1 half, I would have x minus 4 on one side and 3 on the other. So that wouldn't be the equation that we have in letter B. But actually, if I look a little bit more closely, that is exactly the equation we would have in letter F. So I'm going to circle letter F. So if I multiply again both sides of this equation by 1 half, I get the equation x minus 4 equals 3. Now 3x plus 5 equals 12. Well, if I added x to the left side, I would have also had to add x to the right side. And I don't see that happening here. So that's not going to have the same solution set. Same thing here. We have a 3x. So if I added an x to the left side, I would have had to add an x to the right side. And then 2x plus 4 equals 18. Well, comparing the 6 and the 18, it looks like we added 12 to the right side of the equation. So if we add 12 to the left side of this equation, negative 8 plus 12 would be positive 4 which we have here, and we still have that 2x, so that's going to have the same solution. Okay, so a, e, and f are all versions of the same equation. Now let's put a green square around b, so x minus 1 equals 2. So if I look at letter c, it looks like the right side was multiplied by 6, so if I multiply the left side by 6, I'd have 6x minus 6, which doesn't match up there. And let's see, 3x minus 3 equals 6. Well, the right side looks like from 2 to 6, I multiply by 3. So if I multiply the left side by 3, I'd have 3x minus 3. If I distribute, make sure we distribute to both terms. And that's exactly what we have here. So that goes in a green box. And that means letter C, I'll put in a blue triangle, is all by itself. None of the other equations have the same solution as 3x plus 5 equals 12. Hey, so we talked about a lot of good things here. We talked about solution sets. We talked about the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality. And now it's your turn to go and practice.